let's continue our profit forecasting case study from where we left off. So now we've already entered the sales quantities for all of the years. We've also entered the price for all of the years, taking into account the starting value and the percentage growth rate. Now let's compute the sales revenue, which is the third row of our spreadsheet. So computing the sales revenue is a simple process. It's just the product of the sales number of units, the quantity and the price. So clearly in B6, we can enter the formula equals B4 times B5. Okay. This time notice that we kept both the addresses relative B4 and B5. Okay. Why did we do that? Think about it a little bit before you continue. Pause the video. Think about why we kept both of these addresses as relative. Is there a need to make one of them absolute or both of them absolute? What do you think? Okay. So you probably found out the correct answer. The point is that this gives us the sales revenue for the year 2017. We now need to calculate the sales revenue for the remaining years, 2018 through 2021. And once you write the formula here like this with two relative addresses, then simply copying and pasting the formula for all of the remaining years will do the job. Because, for example, if we post the current formula, if we copy the uh, value in B6, not the formula that is displayed, but the value that you see in C6, if you copy the cell C6, uh, B6, and paste it into C6, the formula that is going to get pasted is equals C4 times C5, which will calculate the sales revenue for the year 2018. And therefore, this formula we can simply copy to all of the remaining years and sales revenue will be done. Okay, So that's the reason with that we left the sales revenue formula here, B4 and B5 as both relative. Okay, so now we've got the sales revenue and of course because we multiplied by a dollar figure, quantity by a dollar figure, it is showing the sales revenue also as dollars. It did the formatting automatically for us. Okay, and currencies are always shown with uh, commas, so that's a good thing. Uh, but of course, by default, it is possible that when you did this, the sales revenue was shown with decimal places. Typically, when you have such large numbers, we are not interested in seeing the cents portion of, uh, of, of uh, dollar values and therefore, we can, use the, uh, we can use the toolbar above and use the two arrows to shift the decimal place uh, to the right and get rid of whatever values appear after the decimal place. Okay, so that's what we are showing up here. And of course, you can just uh, try say changing the sales units or prices in 2017 from our assumptions area in the columns H and I. And then you can immediately see how all of the numbers change automatically. Right, so just change for example the unit price in 2017 from 10 to 11. Don't change it here, change it in the assumptions area. Right? Because here, what we have for prices are all formulas. What we have for sales numbers, units are all formulas. So change into the assumption and see immediately how all of these numbers get recalculated automatically. So at this point, this is what we have so far. We've got the sales price. In fact, we have one more row that I have not shown here. We've got the sales revenue as well. And we've got these assumptions in place. Let's move forward with some more planning inputs. Okay, so now we've got the sales revenue. Of course, we want to calculate the profit, which means that we need to know the raw material cost, direct labor cost, depreciation, etc. Okay, so once again, some more assumptions. The raw material cost per unit of finished product in 2017, they, we are told that it's $5.50, and that value is going to grow at a 3% annualized rate. Similarly, the direct labor cost per unit of product, output finished product in 2017 is $1.50 and that is also going to grow at a rate of 3%. The depreciation 
per year is fixed at a hundred thousand dollars this is for machinery and uh, buildings and so on and the fixed costs that the business is going to incur in 2017 is uh, 150,000 and we are told that the fixed cost is going to grow at a rate of 1.5 percent per annum okay by fixed cost we mean the cost that is not dependent on how many units we produce okay that is only the variable cost which is the raw material and labor cost those are variable depending on how many units we produce but whether or not we produce even one unit we're going to incur certain fixed costs and those fixed costs are going to grow over time because maybe we are going to upgrade the plant and so on and so forth okay so these are additional assumptions and we want to incorporate these as well so now first of all let's add all of those things all of these items let's add them to our assumptions area so we put in all of these new assumptions here just copied from the previous one and now let's start putting in the raw material cost per unit which is you know 550 so that's going to be just the absolute address of wherever the value is and here we are incorporating the growth right I'm not showing you all the details because by now you know how to do this and here we've got a formula for the total raw material cost okay so here this is simply I7 that's where the 550 is and here we've got the formula equals B8 times 1 plus dollar I dollar 8 which contains the 3% growth rate and then similarly the total raw material cost is nothing but B4 times B8 B4 being how many units we're producing B8 is the raw material cost per unit so this is B4 times B8 right so here all of these formulas are now copied right so this 567 the formula in cell C8 uh, has been copied for the remaining things here and uh, the formula in the cell uh, C9 uh, in fact in the cell B9 has been copied for all the remaining okay so that gives us the raw material cost per unit and the total raw material cost same thing we are doing for direct labor costs once again uh, uh, this is the initial direct labor cost which is I9 and that's the formula B11 times 1 plus dollar I dollar 10 that is the, this is again the 3 percent growth rate we've put in the absolute address by now you know all of this and total direct labor cost once again is direct labor cost per unit multiplied by the number of units which is B4 times B11 and once again we copied all of these formulas to account for the remaining years okay so it's just a lot of repetitive computations which are all similar but you're seeing more and more how to do all of these things now depreciation we are saying is fixed okay so that's the depreciation we're just assuming that it's fixed if it was variable then we can account for that if you said for example the depreciation is a certain percentage of the, of the fixed cost then we could account for that here we are just assuming that it's fixed and the fixed cost again we know that uh, uh, this is the fixed cost for the first year 2017 and we know that it's going to grow at a certain rate so we've got that and we've got all of this done okay this is just moved a little up it's, it should be down here so that's done okay so we've taken care of all of this okay so that's the fixed cost the previous slide was not correct and now we are computing the profit before tax okay notice again how the row numbers in all of these slides are different because I'm, I'm not showing you the whole spreadsheet I'm showing you only the part that is important okay so the profit before tax is nothing but sales revenue minus direct labor costs minus material costs minus depreciation right so all of those things we're taken care of right that is we've calculated okay so we've got the sales revenue which was in the previous slide minus total raw material cost minus total direct labor minus depreciation minus fixed costs 
and that is your profit before tax okay so that's how you calculate profit before tax write this formula here and then you can just copy the formula for all of the remaining cells okay so far so good this is what our spreadsheet looks like right now right so we did uh, the sales uh, price raw material price sales revenue raw material cost all of that and this is the profit before tax that we've calculated for all the remaining years so we've seen the formulas to do all of this so far and here are all the assumptions that we made in order to arrive at all this okay now our next job is to make the spreadsheet a little easier to read right when you have tables and tables of numbers and all kinds of things it's a little tough on the eye so as far as possible we should try to make things easier for uh, people to understand of course we also want to add titles and you know just make it generally more user friendly okay so what I'm going to do is to pause the recording of our case study right here and allow you to catch up with this point right to go back look at all the formulas make sure that your spreadsheet now looks like this and we've reached this point and once you do that continue on with the next recording to see how we can format this and make this easier to read.